My name is Sarah Augustin. I'm currently living in Atlanta, Georgia, and I attend Emory University, pursuing a Master of Theological Studies degree at the Candler School of Theology. This summer, I'm working in the Office of Communications to create a presentation to highlight the stories and contributions of Black children in the Daniel A.P. Murray Collection. Daniel A.P. Murray was the second African-American librarian to work with the Library of Congress. The Daniel A.P. Murray Collection highlights the important narratives, achievements, and depictions of African-Americans in the 19th and 20th century. And a notable contribution to his collection was that of the numerous photographs that you will soon see taken by W.E.B. Du Bois for the 1900 Paris Exhibition on African-Americans. Daniel A.P. Murray's influence on the Library of Congress is incalculable. Though this collection is quite vast, less than 1% of these documents are focused on the experiences and stories of Black children. I seek to center two specific documents that offer unique detailing into the stories of Black children within the 19th and early of 20th century. Little Danzy's One Day at Sabbath School by Mrs. N.F. Mossel and Zena, The Slave Girl or Witch the Traitor by Dr. A. Thompson. N.F. Mossel introduces the reader to the narrative of the child Danzy embarking on her first day of Sabbath school. On this day, she learns the story of the sacrifice of Jesus and his willingness to lay his life down for his friends, and she is enamored by this life ethic. The morning of a school trip, Danzy is the first to notice an approaching train en route to strike her teacher, Mr. Ellsworth, who does not register its arrival due to his ongoing hearing loss. She immediately runs to pull him out of harm's way, but her own garment is subsequently caught by the arriving train, dragging her across the tracks. At her funeral, Mr. Ellsworth acknowledges her own sacrifice and celebrates the leadership of children, reading the listed Bible verse, ending with, and a little child shall lead them, hence the title of my own presentation. Danzy's stark personhood, influence, and sacrifice is the crux of my research, an exemplary case of the importance and influence of children within the historical archives. Zena, the slave girl, or which the traitor by Dr. A. Thompson offers the depiction of children in another way. Zena, an enslaved 15-year-old girl, is being heavily abused by her master and desires to be bought by another master who promises to free her. When both masters enter the impending war on opposite sides, Zena also thrusts herself into the war. She pretends to be on the side of her own master, but actually serves as a careful spy for the opposing side. She successfully orchestrates the death of her master in order to liberate herself from his abusive clutches. This type of savvy and tact from a 15-year-old girl is unimaginable and showcases the level of intellect and capability that a child can tap into, even in the face of the most horrendous circumstances. And lastly, pictured across my various slides are the unnamed faces of numerous Black children who have been photographed, yet whose particular stories we shall never know. Still, their contribution to the Daniel A.P. Murray collection matters too. Throughout my presentation, one is introduced to the way in which the depiction and representation of Black children serve as an often overlooked but informative window into the life of African Americans. The Black children have indeed led us in the past, and they continue to lead us in more modern times as well. External examples of these influences of Black children could be seen in Birmingham, Alabama, with their historic Children's Crusade in 1963, Marching for Civil Rights. A more contemporary example would be Mari Kopany, who we might know as Little Miss Flint, who tirelessly advocates for clean water in Flint, Michigan. History cannot be accurately assessed in the absence of one's consideration of the stories and experiences of children. When given the opportunity, Black children are able to embody an ethic and spirit that should be both mirrored and remembered. I want to thank the Library of Congress, the Office of Communications, and my project mentor, Deanna McRae-James, for their support and guidance as I bring this crucial project to the forefront. Thank you.